integrated river basin management is a way of looking at a whole basin at a time and the subsurface waters that contribute to it. First to understand how they all work together and then to see what the different uses of water are for growing food, for drinking water, for the environment, for fish, and then trying to utilize processes of involving all these different types of people in the decision making to balance the uses. So everyone gets some use, but uh, in the end, everyone will be disappointed a little bit, but everyone will be better off. Success in a river basin, take the Mississippi River Basin as a, as a good example, would be that there are not unreasonable expectations that you can ship all the products all the time, that you can grow the maximum amount of food that you want, that you can protect all the wildlife and all the, the ecosystem or preserve it forever. Uh, it's about how do you have give and take so that each, of, each, each interest can, can have some of its interest there. Water is never really stationary. Water changes when there's dry times and wet times. Look at the last two years. There was an exceptional flood in 2011 in the Mississippi River Basin, and now in 2012 there's an exceptional drought. So these institutions and the people's participation in them need to be adaptive, what we call adaptive management. And that's what integrated uh, river basin management can give you. Uh, the institutions, the funding, the science, the participation by uh, interest groups so that things become more balanced. Uh, the integrated approaches have been attempted but many times attempted just by the water sector people and not involved with the environment people, not involved with the agriculture people, not involved with the, the power people. So it's been tried and not really working very well. So people are understanding that now, that this needs to be cross-sectoral and based on basins. Uh, there are driving forces out there now. The conflicts are creating real problems, especially with the poor people who depend on the, the water environment, and the water environment is now all degraded and, and depleted in places. So you have voices from the communities speaking up, and, and unrest in some cases. In the United States with the Clean Water Act, and in Europe with the Water Framework Directive, uh, water quality has improved. At the GEF, we uh, we put about a hundred million dollars in the Danube River Basin, along with five hundred million dollars of the of the countries that were eligible, and probably billions from the European Union as part of the the countries that came out of centrally planned economies uh, becoming part of Europe. And the pollution, the nutrient pollution, has been reduced there fifty percent over these fifteen, twenty. 20 years. So this is a case just like the Mississippi River and the Gulf of Mexico with a dead zone where a big river comes in. It's the Danube and the Black Sea. But the dead zone now has been almost eliminated in the Black Sea. I have hopes that, uh, that progress can be made, especially here in the United States. I know there's the America's Great Watershed Initiative going on. I think the time is, is right for this, and the driving forces are there, and there seem to be willing participants. The only way forward, I think, in, in integrated river basin uh, management is to have the business community uh, understand that uh, it's in their best interest and have a interested third party bring the business community together with the citizens, together with other NGOs, and, uh, and state and federal government to try to to see if, uh, if they can, again, rebalance the system. Um, I thought the, the, the agriculture business community have got to be the, the leaders here. Otherwise, there's no way things will go through Congress or money will be appropriated to, to make it go. Mm -hmm.